So this question definitely looks like a translate word problem question. I say that just given the sheer length of the question itself. So with this strategy, we just want to read one sentence at a time and make sure we're writing down any quantitative information as we read it. So the first sentence here says, a biologist selected a sample of adult female Carner blue butterflies at random from a local population. Nothing quantitative there. Second sentence, the mean four wing length of the butterflies in the sample is 1.5 centimeters. So I'm gonna write down uh, 1.5 cm equals, I'll just say length. The next sentence says the margin of error associated with this estimate for the population mean is one centimeter, right? So let me say, in fact, mean or average length. And then the margin, margin of error, so plus or minus one cm is the margin of error. The next sentence says if the biologist wants an estimate that has a smaller margin of error, associated with it and can be generalized to the entire local population, which of the following changes should be made when the study is repeated? So first of all, let's deal with the facts, right? So we know that the mean length for the four wing is 1.5 centimeters long, but to only have, to have a mean of 1.5 and a margin of error of one is very large margin of error, right? So a reason why I put plus or minus is because margin of error could be on the downside, so minus the one centimeter, or to the upside, so plus one centimeter. So keep that in mind whenever you see margin of error. It can be plus or minus. So having a very large margin of error typically means that your sample size is not large enough, right? You need to get more variety within your sample to get a true sense of what's going on in the entire population. So let's read the answer choices. Choice A, using a different tool to measure the butterflies. Not sure that would make a big difference, um, so I'm going to cross that out. Choice B, measuring the butterflies at two different times of the day and comparing the results. Not sure that four wing length, there's no information in the question that tells us that the four wing length of these blue butterflies will change throughout the day, so B is gone. Choice C, selecting and measuring only the butterflies that look the smallest. Well, what are, we, what are we looking for? We're looking for a smaller margin of error. Um, so selecting and measuring only the butterflies that look the smallest would possibly give us a smaller margin of error, but it would not give us information that can be generalized to the entire local population, right? So there's a little bit of good with this answer choice, but it doesn't fit for population-wide data, right? It would just lower our margin of error, but not be indicative of anything about the entire population. Choice D, selecting and measuring a larger random sample of the butterflies. This is definitely the answer. I alluded to it before even seeing the answer, and that's just a general idea, right? So any question that you see on this test that's asking how you can have data from a sample to more closely reflect an entire population, it's usually going to be that you have a larger sample. As long as that sample is random, so you're not choosing, you know, specifically some subgroup like we saw in choice C, choosing the subgroup of small butterflies. As long as you're choosing randomly, the larger the sample gets, the larger the sample size gets, the more likely that data from that sample size is reflective of the entire population. So choice D is the correct answer here.